verses 4 to 6. How suddenly and strangely a blessed change was wrought in him, not in the use of any ordinary means, but by miracles. The conversion of Paul is one of the wonders of the church. Here is the place and time of it, as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus, and there, Christ met with him. He was in the way, traveling upon his journey, not in the temple, nor in the synagogue, nor in the meeting of the Christians, but by the way. The work of conversion is not tied to the church, though ordinarily public administrations are made use of. Some are reclaimed in slumberings on the bed, Job 33,15-17, and some in traveling upon the road alone, thoughts are as free, and there is as good an opportunity of communing with our own hearts there, as upon the bed, and there the spirit may set in with us, for that wind blows where it listeth. Some observe that Saul was spoken to abroad in the open air that there might be no suspicion of imposture, nor of a trick put upon him in it. He was near Damascus, almost at his journey's end, ready to enter the city, the chief city of Syria. Some observe that he who was to be the apostle of the Gentiles was converted to the faith of Christ in a Gentile country. Damascus had been infamous for persecuting God's people formerly they threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron, Amos 1 3, and now it was likely to be so again. He was in a wicked way, pursuing his design against the Christians at Damascus, and pleasing himself with the thought that he should devour this newborn child of Christianity there. Note, sometimes the grace of God works upon sinners when they are at the worst, and hotly engaged in the most desperate sinful pursuits, which is much for the glory both of God's pity and of his power. The cruel edict and decree he had with him drew near to be put in execution, and now it was happily prevented, which may be considered as a great kindness to the poor saints at Damascus, who had notice of his coming, as appears by what Ananias said, v. 13, 14, and were apprehensive of their danger from him, and trembled as poor lambs at the approach of a ravening wolf, Saul's conversion was their security for the present. Christ has many ways of delivering the godly out of temptation, and sometimes does it by a change wrought in their persecutors, either restraining their wrathful spirits, PS 76 10, and mollifying them for a time, as the Old Testament Saul, who relented towards David more than once, 1 SA 24 16, 26 21, or renewing their spirits, and fixing upon them durable impressions, as upon the New Testament Saul here. It was also a very great mercy to Saul himself to be hindered from executing his wicked design, in which if he had now proceeded, perhaps it had been the filling up of the measure of his iniquity. Note, it is to be valued as a signal token of the divine favor if God, either by the inward operations of his grace or the outward occurrences of his providence, prevent us from prosecuting and executing a sinful purpose. 1 SA 25:32. The appearance of Christ to him in his glory. Here it is only said that there shone round about him a light from heaven, but it appears from what follows, v. 17, that the Lord Jesus was in this light, and appeared to him by the way. He saw that just one, ch. 22 14, and cch. 26 13. Whether he saw him at a distance, as Stephen saw him, in the heavens, or nearer in the air, is not certain. It is not inconsistent with what is said of the heavens receiving Christ till the end of time, ch. 321, to suppose that he did, upon such an extraordinary occasion as this, make a personal visit, but a very short one, to this lower world, it was necessary to Paul's being an apostle that he should see the Lord, and so he did, 1 co 9 colon 1, 15 colon 8. This light shone upon him suddenly exaphne s, when Paul never thought of any such thing, and without any previous warning. Christ's manifestations of himself to poor souls are many times sudden and very surprising, and he anticipates them with the blessings of his goodness. This the disciples that Christ called to himself found. Or ever I was aware, C.A.N.T. 6.12. It was a light from heaven, the fountain of light, from the God of heaven, the Father of lights. It was a light above the brightness of the sun, ch. 26 13, for it was visible at midday, and outshone the sun in his meridian strength and luster, isa. 24 23. 
It shone round about him, not in his face only, but on every side of him, let him turn which way he will, he finds himself surrounded with the discoveries of it. And this was designed not only to startle him, and awaken his attention, for well may he expect to hear when he is thus made to see something very extraordinary, but to signify the enlightening of his understanding with the knowledge of Christ. The devil comes to the soul in darkness, by this he gets and keeps possession of it. But Christ comes to the soul in light, for he is himself the light of the world, bright and glorious to us, as light. The first thing in this new creation, as in that of the world, is light, 2 co 4 colon 6. Hence all Christians are said to be children of the light and of the day, f 5 colon 8. The arresting of Saul, and his detachment, he fell to the earth, v 4. Some think that he was on foot, and that this light, which perhaps was accompanied with a thunderclap, so terrified him that he could not keep his feet, but fell upon his face, usually a posture of adoration, but here of astonishment. It is probable that he was mounted, as Balaam, when he went to curse Israel, and perhaps better mounted than he, for Saul was now in a public post, was in haste, and the journey was long, so that it is not likely he should travel on foot. The sudden light would frighten the beast he rode on, and make it throw him, and it was God's good providence that his body got no hurt by the fall, but angels had a particular charge concerning him, to keep all his bones, so that not one of them was broken. It appears, ch 26 14, that all that were with him fell to the earth as well as he, but the design was upon him. This may be considered, as the effect of Christ's appearing to him, and of the light which shone round about him. Note, Christ's manifestations of himself to poor souls are humbling, they lay them very low, in mean thoughts of themselves, and a humble submission to the will of God. Now mine eyes see thee, saith Job, I abhor myself. I saw the Lord, saith Isaiah, sitting upon a throne, and I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. As a step towards this intended advancement, he is designed not only to be a Christian, but to be a minister, an apostle, a great apostle, and therefore he must thus be cast down. Note, those whom Christ designs for the greatest honors are commonly first laid low. Those who are designed to excel in knowledge and grace are commonly laid low first, in a sense of their own ignorance and sinfulness. Those whom God will employ are first struck with a sense of their unworthiness to be employed. 